place to between <laughs> two mirrors. Oh, I'm Myra, cool. and today sitting with me is <laughs> Anthony. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks for letting me on your show. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good intro. Right? Yeah, that works. <laughs> All right, guys, we're here. My name is Myra again. I should put my hair down. And I'm here to talk business. And religion. <laughs> and religion. <laughs> and maybe some other stuff. But we'll, you'll have to wait and see. Here, I'll tell you something. Last month I made an episode and I was supposed to interview a religious believer, a believer in Christ. And to be honest, at the time, I was an unbeliever. And I was seeking to have someone answer for me, once and for all, uh, the big questions that I had. Which were? For example, let's see, you know, where is the definitive proof? If God existed, why didn't he just fix everything now? Or why does suffering exist? And also, hmm, of course the people too, who wanted to discuss forceful people force it on others and people that use religion to judge others telling them that they need saving and all this other bad stuff or my favorite is the hypocrites which is to say people that make claims that they are righteous or overall that their moral code is really high yeah but unfortunately their actions don't match but hey, I'm a nice guy now it's not so much that they're hypocrites <laughs> it's just that we're human beings and this idea of perfection is more or less is harder than it sounds. So it's just an idea. What is perfection? Correct. I guess my first question would be, what was the biggest thing that changed you from talking to her before you did your research? Shoot, I'm not well spoken. For sure, it was the first time in my life that I even did research on the topic because before I was simply not believing and disagreeing with all this religious stuff but I've never I mean I've, I mean so one of the things I learned is like dude have you even read the Bible because the Bible's like what well, it's like the core of everything they believe in and it's all contained there and for me it felt unfair to say you know, religion, God's not real, religious this, really, like all these things are wrong if I didn't even look into what they were trying to say, yeah. or the points they were trying to make. So one of the biggest changes was actually being open-minded and giving them a chance to either prove me wrong or prove themselves right. Just, just, it's more of an uh, exchange of knowledge, which I was not open to before because I was so hard-headed with the facts, to me they were facts, which is, oh, if he's, if God is so good, well, what's up with all this bad stuff going on? Just, just simple things like that. It's like, well, you can't even get rid of uh, these simple things done, like, uh, the, the fact that God is supposed to be so good or represent good, the embodiment of good, with all this bad happening, that's already the first, to me, it was like a hypocrisy. How could I go further into studying this this religion or uh, giving them any credit if one of my first questions can't even be answered? Well, at least not in the way that I would have wanted to have been. Well, that's why you have to have faith, right? That's part of it, right? Yeah, that one is... Because uh... <laughs> that's the whole thing. Like, yeah, you don't have like this physical proof that he exists and all this stuff about him is true. That's why you need to have faith in it. Correct. That'll fill the gaps. Yeah, that, that'll make you feel more like comfortable and at ease with believing. That's definitely for sure, which I admit is still a gray area. It can turn someone into a believer or like maintain their faith. I mean, through faith, they can maintain their belief. At the same time, you know, the fact that it's so abstract yeah. And there's so little proof behind it in this whole spiritual realm that you can't really materialize or present physically in the first place. Yeah. I call it a gray area because it could also be a reason for so many to choose not to believe. It's like, come on, 
uh, that that statement, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. So yeah, I believe that faith can be used either for or against, depending on the individual mm-hmm. and what their goals are. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things on, I'm sure I can't think of many right now, but that you can say that you believe in, but like doesn't exist. Like, what is everybody saying now? Like energy and like stuff like that, like your vibes and stuff like that. You can't physically see it, but like you could feel someone's energy and stuff, right? Is that a Correct, good example? Correct, yes. If I would like to add to that. Um, I can't further that point, but one of the biggest ones that I had planned was love. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because so physically and you know visually what you see what you might see this is an example hypothetical is uh you know you have uh one partner that is exhibiting certain traits uh outgoing open-minded and their partner let's just say they have conflicting or opposite traits yeah so naturally you're like well this is not a good fit i mean this is what we're seeing this is the proof and the evidence but you know, uh, there's so much more beneath it, and not so much faith, but again, it's love that cannot, you cannot just, uh, how can you express it? What, like a hug or a kiss? Is that physical proof? No, I mean, if you put all the pieces together and you tell one person, like, dude, you guys have so much, so many differences and so many things that you don't have in common, or let's just say, which is a real case where some partners are restricting jealous and they start to exhibit like negative or bad things of course the whole world's gonna tell them you gotta get away from that or you gotta so this the point i was trying to make with love is that love can supersede of what you see and I feel Damn, like, it's hard to put into words, but does I that make like sense? I feel like love is hard to define because it changes as time goes. You think you're in love when you're in this jealous, like, bad relationship, right? But it all it is is that you're not complete yourself. You don't feel like a complete person and, or, like, you're not confident or whatever the case may be. So you feel like you need this person to be complete, so to speak. Right? So you, you, you perceive that as love, but it's not love. Did hmm. I word that correctly? I believe that any individuals that claim that they're in love, I believe that they're, it's real, and I believe in, in those moments that they're saying it, it's real. Uh, but like you said, if there's a flaw within that person i think that's the key difference if they're either not complete or there's a lot of self-improvement to be had on their part or all those bad traits that would still conflict with another person i think that is i don't want to call it a problem but i don't have a better word for it that that's where the uh misunderstanding comes in but i believe that the feeling of love can be it can be remained in one like it's true it can still be, the, the love can be true, but all those complications and problems, yeah. they actually, I believe that the core is within the person. Yeah. That's where the yeah. roadblocks come in. Yeah. But I still believe that, at least to the person, that, it, yeah, it's real. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, I agree with you. <laughs> you no, but I mean, of you course. You worded it a, little better, a lot better than me. No, I mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and uh, I still, th- I mean, of course... Only, yeah, it's like you said, though. So, to your point, um, time changes people. And sometimes a love that is real in one moment, yeah, can change. Yeah. And it could not be real (laughs) in a month or so or with life circumstances happening. That could definitely change the dynamic. No, anyway, uh, (laughs) love compared to the religious thing, right? Love and faith. Well, it would be the same thing, right? I I feel like... They're very similar, yes. They're so similar that I cannot say that they are different. Because it's like your love for God is like what the faith is too, right? I would like to share something with you. What? In my transition from not believing, it was exactly those words, the word love that had changed my mind entirely. Because I had a conversation with someone on Instagram. And he's like, don't don't think about God as this all-powerful being think about god as love and the embodiment of love and i'm like damn you know what see now that i can believe in that i can roll with because my whole life 
the love was one of the most powerful things that I've ever not witnessed but witnessed and gone through so yeah yeah if you want to take it a step back and say that you know to believe in God is or or if you want to say God is the embodiment of love now that is a lot easier to 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 roll with so like yeah I believe in love and God is you know one yeah. and the same but it sounds a lot different I promise than saying you know I'm, I believe in God and I believe in love that to me I feel like the uh, to phrase it is in to phrase it that you believe in the idea of love sounds a lot more easier and universal for yeah. someone to accept because they don't have all that religion tied to it and all the rules tied to it something positive but now I'm not going on record to say that they're two different uh that they're one in the same exactly obviously to some people they view god so as so do you feel like you can embody love without putting god in front of that fully you can embody love fully as an individual without being like religious and going the way you went you got me good because I'm having trouble finding the words, but uh, Wait, so love God. as a standalone, I believe I can accept. And it, for other people, that's fine if you want to take that as a standalone thing. But my question would be as the overthinker is like, okay, well, where did, where did that come from? Yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, there's this, 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 uh, this place where I just... <laughs> what? I can't help but ask myself for all these deeper questions. Well, where did that come from? So what came before that? What came before that? So apparently God is the beginning of everything, which is why I'm okay with kind of meshing the two. Yeah. Yeah, love as a standalone thing, but where did love come from is why I will, like, connect it with God. Because, yeah. Uh... Does this make sense? Like, if I were to ask you, you know, where does love come from? You kind of get what I mean? Yeah. It's for all these deeper topics and all the deeper thoughts, you just keep looking for this. Oh, looking for the source. Well, there's not really an answer, to be honest. That's fine. How so not? <laughs> it's just like, where does love come from? Like, the love is not like something physical, like we just said. Like, you can't define something that's not, like, really there. I will gladly converse with you in, again, which I call this a gray area, where facts and all that are really hard to present. Yeah. And then we're reaching that area where, uh, you know, you have your beliefs and I have mine, and it's kind of... Here's the thing, though. I was religious when I was younger, right? Mm -hmm. In my, like, early teens, like, I used to love going to church. I used to, like, I was young, but I would try to read the Bible, and i try to go to those catalog classes. But that's when I stopped liking it, when I had to start going to classes and then reading, breaking down the Bible and stuff. And then, like, and then my dad passed away. And then, then that's when I was just like, meh. Like, I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> like, I just gave up. Not that, I, like, I'm totally against it and I believe that God doesn't exist and all this stuff. It's just, I, I probably sound ignorant saying it, but I feel like I could live a perfectly normal life and, like, happy, full of love and all this stuff without it. Which I know I probably sound ignorant saying. No. <laughs> I have no problem with that statement. Yeah. Again, uh, I feel like I have to, unfortunately, keep pressing for myself on the question of where did it all come from and why. Uh, again, uh, so you just said that uh, it's possible to live, say that again? Live a perfectly good life full of love. Void of religion, right? Religion is not needed to live a perfectly good life. Is yeah, that, is not that? like perfectly, but like be a good person. I understand that like after death, there's like, you go to one or two places. But like, if you become religious because you're afraid of death, I feel like that's kind of like, eh. I'm going to push that one to the side and I will gladly return to that. I do feel like I have something to say with the 
what we were talking about now. So my question to you is, uh, okay, for now, do you believe that when we die, it's just nothingness? Yeah, or ghosts, we just wander around. All right. I should say, so for the most part, everything we do in our lives, it won't even have an effect on the afterlife, right? It won't mean anything. I want to cuss right now, but I generally don't. <laughs> For you, I will, and I'll just cut it out. Like, none of this shit matters, right? Why the fuck should I care that's what like, I'm doing right now? That's what I feel like is a big problem in, like, today's society, like, for kids and, and for anybody, because, like, we're all trying to find a meaning for our lives, right? We're all trying to find a purpose, and, like, if you're religious, it helps you feel like you have a purpose and, like, stuff like that, because we all have this, like, as human beings, I feel like it's na natural to, like, feel like you need a purpose. That's why love is so important, because once you have someone else, you have a purpose, you're you're living for them, you have a family, you're living for them, you have to provide for them, like you have like people that depend on you. So that's why like we're so like, that's like our thing, like we have to like find someone, have kids, do this like typical thing that society like makes you do. But then when you step uh, away from that, in my opinion of course, I could totally be wrong, I just feel like if you totally don't really put so much emphasis in like what my purpose is and just like chase what you love not really trying to find a purpose like you'll find your purpose not in that typical way if that makes any sense <laughs> I feel like such a jerk right now because I can't help but keep leaning back towards that I personally believe that God has either created love or God is love my point is, to me, God and love are one and the same, for the most part. So, <clears throat> let me take a step back and say, I agree that uh, even when, oh, so let's take it further. When I was a non-believer, I was like, fuck yeah, like, come on, like, I am not a bad person just because I don't believe in God. Like, are you fucking crazy? Like, I know that with all the things I've been through in my life, like I've learned from my mistakes, so on and so forth, I yeah. know, and you don't know, that I actually give a shit about this, this, this. I care about how other people feel and all that. Like, are you seriously trying to discredit all that? Like, are you serious right now? Like, are you telling me I'm gonna go to hell and this and that? Like, that is, that was one of the hardest things for and me to get by. Why do we have to prove ourselves that we're good people? Because we don't believe in God. Like, why, why when somebody talks to you about religion, because I've had this conversation before, I have to prove to them, or somehow, like, I always feel like I have to be, like, I'm a good person. Like, I'm not, like, this atheist, like, crazy person that's, like, I hate God. Like, I hate the, that feeling that I always have to feel like, but I'm not going to prove myself today. Like, I don't care, like, if you think I'm a bad person, whatever. You know, I still sleep the same at night. <laughs> hmm. On that point, um, the good news for me when I was studying all this stuff is uh, at least to my knowledge, the Christian view is you don't have to prove anything to anybody. All that matters is the direct communication with God. And I believe that is by means of praying. And I'm not saying you don't have to go to church and all that or you have to... You don't have to do all these things, but that's what matters most. So when you say that you felt at the time you had to prove something to someone, I wish to say, <laughs> this is kind of rude too, but uh, <laughs> any of the hypocrisies and any of the peer pressures and all of the judgments from individuals that claim to be religious, yeah. I find that to be a fault on the individual. And it's hard for some people to separate but the individual and the way they're acting is the separate from religion and it's separate from what, uh, you know, the gospel or what God says and all this about being good. And uh, yeah, so the, my point is those are two separate things. And I feel that one of the biggest, it's not a mistake, but 
it's unfortunate that some people are like, okay, because of you, I don't believe anymore, or because of you, I don't. Yeah. They kind of ruined it for some people, which, uh, uh, you know, that's just the way I feel about it. It should be pinned on individuals, individual accounts, because, I mean, from what I know, uh, the Bible has X amount of truth and X amount of story, so the, my point is there's a lot that is open for interpretation, and people are so different that, you know, this is how you get... This is why not everyone's uh, on the same page with this mission and not everyone's perfectly good. Yeah. Because there's still... I mean, I mean another thing they believe in is uh, by nature we are still all imperfect. Yeah. Uh, choosing to believe and follow and all that doesn't make you... You know, it doesn't really change you as much as you think. Uh, yeah, we're still imperfect. That that's That's part of the reason why... I feel people continue to believe and continue to pray because every day there's just something that they may may not feel like they need help with. But uh, I still want to talk about this other thing that when you said earlier that uh, yeah you can be a good person and all that without religion. Mm -hmm. That is one possibility. So I don't I don't I don't mean to say that this is my argument for reals, but my argument is that if what we do in this life has no effect on the afterlife people can use that knowledge or fact to be the absolute opposite of what you just said so that is the difference between being religious and not which is to say now you can have someone be perfectly fine without religion but on the same token what the word nihilism wow anyone can justify like why should I give a about other people I'm here to get money for myself and live life for myself on my own f***ing terms like who that gives a f like when I die all my sh you know and there that's are the only like that. issue or not it's not an issue I apologize we're not debating we're not arguing yeah. I have to make that clear